Hello everybody, my name is Jimfish, and in today's episode of the Redstone Toolbox, I'll be talking about TNT. Now TNT is probably not the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of redstone components, but if we go ahead and open the creative menu and look in the redstone tab, it is basically near the top, just behind a couple of other components, so I would definitely consider it a useful item in redstone. And it definitely is, because in pretty much countless farms, TNT is used in a wide variety of cases, and there's also uses for TNT outside of farms that are more fun, like TNT cannons or TNT taps, which I'll talk about in this video right here. So as always, the first thing I'll do is show you how to craft some TNT, and to do that, you'll need 5 gunpowder and just make an X shape like so in the crafting bench, and place down 4 sand, one in each other slot of the crafting table, like so, and we get our TNT. Now, as I'm sure many of you guys know already, TNT can be ignited by just going ahead and using a fire charge or flint and steel on it like so, and we'll see that the TNT will explode a certain area around it. Now also, if you have the fire ticket game rule on, which some servers do, some servers don't, but I think it is on by default, there'll be some fire around here generated by the TNT. You can also detonate TNT by using a redstone pulse over here, directly on it like so, and we'll see that blows up just the same. And we'll see that the same is true when we power an adjacent block like so, or fire it from a dispenser. Also, as many of you know, you can light a chain of TNT by just lighting a single piece and it'll spread to the other blocks of TNT. So we'll see here, just by lighting the one on the left, we should see a sort of chain reaction happening where the left one will detonate the ones on the right of it, and we'll see a pretty huge hole here is created. Now, although most blocks can be broken by TNT, there are some which cannot be broken at all and the most common of which is obsidian, we can see that nothing actually happens if we go ahead and blow it up. And something about obsidian is that it can't be pushed or pulled by pistons, so if you want a block that can do that but still won't be broken up at all, you can use this ancient debris here. Now it is very expensive, but you'll see it shouldn't break these blocks beneath it. Also, very commonly we can see that TNT dropped over water, or blocks with water separating them from the TNT, will actually not explode at all, so we can see that it's completely inert in this water, and nothing really happens. The same is true with waterlogged blocks, which is pretty interesting in my opinion, that we can have blocks with water, so for example we can set this up to where the stairs are actually facing away, so they just appear to be solid blocks, but they will be completely indestructible using TNT. Now some blocks have different blast resistances than others, so for example, dirt here will be broken relatively easily by TNT, and we can see that by placing a straight line of dirt out here. Now we'll see that it blows up around three pieces of this dirt, while if we replace this with endstone, we'll see that much less blocks actually get broken, and a full table of all of these blocks and their blast resistances will be included in the wiki page below, but we can see that only one of these endstone blocks actually gets broken, whereas three dirt blocks from before got broken. Now something else is that the TNT, of course, will damage and knock back mobs and players. So you can see that this poor zombie here is just going to get obliterated by his piece of TNT right next to him. But he actually does live, which is quite surprising. But actually, there's these blocks right here which can reduce the damage that it takes. So for example, it's not fully exposed to the TNT, so it doesn't actually die from one of these. But two should just about do the trick. So we can reduce the damage that our mobs take, or our players take, by making sure that there's some degree of a block sort of in between them, or they're on a different elevation than the TNT itself, so for example the zombie is in this little hole right here, so it doesn't take all the damage from the TNT, which at point blank range, would basically kill a lot of mobs, it will kill you even if you're wearing full diamond armor, assuming it's unenchanted, there are enchantments such as blast protection which can reduce the damage taken by TNT. Now because our TNT can be fired from these dispensers, and they also do not deal damage to blocks when they're in water, they still push blocks back, or push entities back rather, and still deal damage to players, we can actually create a very easy TNT cannon using this setup right here, where we have a water stream, we have our TNT dispensers in here, connected to a redstone line, we can press this button and see a TNT comes out, gets all the way to the end, we can place a TNT here and light it, and we'll see that our TNT gets propelled a pretty good distance across here, and we can actually extend that distance by changing this design around a little bit, adding more TNT dispensers, and there's plenty of really cool, intricate designs you can find on YouTube, but I don't actually have very many of those because it's not the most practical thing in the world, but it sure is pretty cool to launch a TNT 50 blocks and watch it blow up. Now a very important design in the TNT farms is this TNT duplicator right here, which effectively takes the place of a dispenser as an infinite TNT duplicator that you don't have to refill because of course, the recipe is actually quite expensive, it takes 5 gunpowder and 4 sand to make one of these blocks of TNT. The 4 sand might be easier to come by, 
but 5 gunpowder can take a while to farm out. Now so all we have is this design, which there will be another link in the description of one of my videos on how to make one of these. But we can see, we can press the button, this piston machine moves forward and backwards and it drops a piece of TNT down here, but our original TNT remains right here. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this over and over an infinite amount of times, assuming it doesn't bug out. And we'll see, this can get sort of dropped down and dig out an infinite hole down here until we reach the bedrock layer. Now there are a couple of different designs we can do here. This is probably the simplest and most accurate design you can make. We can also hook this up to a flying machine so it pushes all the way across into the distance there. And it'll just dig a giant trench. There's a bunch of other things you can do that are very, very worthwhile. So like I said at the beginning of the video, although TNT is definitely an unconventional redstone component, it is still very, very useful in redstone related builds, and it's definitely one of the more creative components you can use to make things like farms, traps, TNT cannons, a lot of other cool designs that are definitely worth checking out. But this is all it's going to have for this video. So that's going to do it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, don't be afraid to leave a like, and you can subscribe for more content just like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.